There's a good chance if you've used a chainsaw a lot, you've experienced some form of kickback. It happens to the best of us. And it's safe to say you don't want to experience that terrifying moment again. Unfortunately, every time you pick up a saw, there's a chance of a kickback. But with the right knowledge, technique, and never getting complacent, you can minimize it. Respect for the tool is key. It all starts with the kickback zone, or what some call the no-go zone, which is the top 90 degree quadrant of the chainsaw bar nose. A kickback occurs when the kickback zone of the guide bar comes in contact with an object. It may be some vines, branches, or even another piece of wood. When the high speed of the chain is stopped, the force must go somewhere. That somewhere is usually a violent motion towards your face, chest, legs, or feet. That's why body positioning is key when using a chainsaw. You always want to be in a stable position, staying in your power zone between your waist and your chest. And since the cutting equipment is mounted on the right side, having proper grip ensures that it's further away from you. Always hold the equipment with both hands. The right hand should be on the rear handle and the left hand on the front handle. This goes for even lefties. Use a firm grip with thumbs and fingers encircling the handles. This grip minimizes the risk of kickback and lets you keep the chainsaw under control. There's a reason there's no left-handed chainsaws. Always remember that. There are two things that are more likely to cause a kickback. First is a dull chain. Dull chains are not capable of slicing wood fibers, so they grab the wood, causing the rotational force of the saw to come back at you. Second, if the chainsaw isn't in full blast, there's a greater chance that the tooth grabbing the wood when contacting the kickback zone and you, the operator, have the same result. Since kickbacks are always a possibility, all chainsaws come with extra built-in protections. Not to rev our own engines too much, but we introduced these safety features back in 1973, specifically the chain brake and inertia brake. The chain brake decreases the risk of accidents and can be engaged manually by pushing the left or front hand guard forward to engage the brake. But for some reason, if your hand isn't in the right position to hit the guard, We've got an inertia brake, which will pick up the sudden movement, quick motion, and activate the spring that engages the chain brake and stops the chain. And for those inclined, we do offer reduced kickback chains that help fill the void when the chain comes around the kickback zone. There are a few things that'll help prevent a kickback. First, never get complacent. Most accidents, particularly kickbacks, happen at the end of the day. You're exhausted and put your guard down, literally and figuratively. Your hands are probably fatigued and you may not be surveying your cutting area as well as you may have earlier in the day. If you find yourself in this mode, take a few minutes to recharge or consider pushing the work to the next day if possible. Another cautionary tip is always be aware of your surroundings. It's extremely helpful to pause, take a finger off the throttle, look around before a cut and sometimes even during a cut, whether aloft or on the ground. It's important to ensure you have a stable footing, especially if you're in a heavy brush area or in an area with heavy storm damage. A lot of accidents occur when someone unfortunately loses their footing. And I know we may sound like your mother, but never work alone. If you haven't heard before, AWBW. Always have an ax, wedges, blood stopper, and a whistle. If you must be alone, don't forget your cell phone. Be safe out there and let's kick kickbacks to the curb. Until next time.